Hello YouTubers, thank you for your patience and welcome to the RPN guide to railway photography locations on Ribblehead Station on the Settled Carlisle line. For many railway photographers, Ribblehead Station is a convenient access point for other attractions such as the Ribblehead Viaduct and Blee Moor. However, situated in the midst of Yorkshire's famous Three Peaks, it can itself be a very spectacular photography location. Although the line from Settled Carlisle takes a firmly north-northwesterly bearing, the section of line at Ribblehead takes a definite swoop to the northwest before its 400 metre leap into thin air supported only by the Ribblehead Viaduct. The implication for railway photography is that the sun moves to the west of the line much sooner than it does on the rest of the route, as you can see here in this mid-morning shot of a train of southbound gypsum empties. The downside of this is that it's not too far into the afternoon before you find the sun is behind southbound trains. The good news is though that nearby Blee Moor is simply bursting with locations for photographing southbound trains in the afternoon. Ribblehead's main building and up platform very strongly give the impression that it's a station very similar to almost all the others on the settled Carlisle line. The classic John Holloway Sanders design and Midland Railway construction from the 1870s mean that if you masked out the background, this could just as easily be Settle or Dent Station. However, the minute you step back and take a look at the station as a whole, it's clear that something a bit different has gone on at Ribblehead. Like most stations on the line, Ribblehead was closed in 1970 and didn't reopen until 1986. However, during this period, a siding for the nearby quarry needed to be built on the down line, and this required the demolition of the original down platform, which obviously stood opposite the existing up platform. A new timber-built down platform was squeezed in in 1993, and this is why Ribblehead Station has its unique staggered platform layout. Consequently, the Ribblehead Station area presents some interesting possibilities for railway photography, with its unusual orientation, offset platforms and quarry sidings. Starting our tour of the station at the southern end of the displaced down platform, we were rewarded with a fairly disappointing view of northbound trains. However, if we look to the north, there's a much more impressive view of southbound trains, which includes not only Wernside, but the top of the Ribblehead Viaduct on the right. Moving along the down platform towards the little waiting room, there are good views to be had of southbound trains approaching the foot crossing, and with a moderate telephoto lens, these can include the station building as well. The downside of the foot crossing can be a slightly annoying vantage point, in that southbound trains tend to block out the station building making this a good spot for photographs that focus on the motive power rather than its surroundings. Nevertheless, no matter how low your vantage point, Wernside always provides a spectacular backdrop. Before leaving the down platform via the crossing, there are a couple more points worth noticing. Leaning over the fence can give you quite an effective view of the quarry sidings, this time with Ingleborough as the impressive background. And secondly, as well as shelter from the sometimes atrocious weather, the tiny waiting room also has a fairly reasonable heater and a public telephone. Once across the foot crossing onto the up platform, there are clearly views to be had of northbound trains. Although these views always have the excellent backdrop of Ingleborough, for most of the day they generally involve shooting towards the sun, although the weather at Ribblehead often means you can rely on clouds to come along and soften up the shadows a bit. Moving up the platform gives you a longer view of northbound trains, and this photograph may give the eagle-eyed amongst you a chance to spot the structural change that's happened at Ribblehead in recent years. The tiny stone bridge which joined two fields of sheep together, which was taken down in 2015. Moving to the very north of the up platform gives a rather cramped view of southbound trains, although the backdrop of Wernside is always an eye-catching element. Having explored Ribblehead's two platforms, there are considerably more railway photography opportunities at the site of the former down platform and by the quarry. Reaching these locations is obviously a simple matter of crossing underneath the railway line, and this is done by heading down the approach road from Ribblehead Station, passing through the bustling metropolis of Ribblehead, which seems to contain a pub, a station, a cattle grid and a bus stop, turning left under the railway bridge and taking care as there really is no pavement, and then turning left again up the limestoney track. This track takes you up to the rather lumpy piece of land next to the site of the original down platform, and looking north from here is a vantage point with one of the most spectacular backdrops on the entire UK rail network. As southbound trains curve away from the Ribblehead Viaduct, the slopes of Wernside are a unique way of completing the picture, no matter what the season of the year. Moving close to the fence at this point is a very popular location for railway photography, as it combines these amazing views to the north with excellent views of trains coming up from the south. Although the sun is on the right side of northbound trains for most of the day, it's not until well into the afternoon before it gets round to the front of the train. This can be a bit of a nuisance if you're out photographing early on a clear morning, or using this spot to record the rare occasions when the quarry siding is in use. Consequently, the best results are sometimes obtained when there's a little bit of cloud around to soften the light. It's also worth pointing out this is a very unforgiving place to stand when the weather turns ugly. Away from the station building there's no shelter at all and just a lump of wood for comfort. Given the very severe weather that this part of the country experiences, serious thought should be given to clothing, footwear and the amount of time spent out here. Looking from this side of the line it's possible to take photographs of southbound trains without them blotting out the station building. To do this involves wriggling yourself in between the fence and the clump of trees by the entrance to the quarry siding. Although this can be a bit of a squeeze with lots of low branches, the resulting photos can be well worth the effort. The lumpy track which brought us up from the road does carry on to the entrance to the quarry, 
This is obviously private property and photographs can only be taken from outside the stone wall and the gate. However, with a bit of scrambling it is possible to find a vantage point for trains in the quarry siding. To do this you need to turn to the right of the gate to the quarry and go through the small wooden gate in front of you. Here there's a handy information panel in case you're having trouble finding Ingleborough, but we want to turn to our left and walk along a bit, keeping the wall of the quarry on our left hand side. Although the land along here is quite uneven and quite a bit of scrambling is involved, this will eventually bring you to a point where you can take photographs overlooking the whole quarry area. Although photographs taken from the field where the down platform used to be are very nice, it always bothers me a bit that they don't include the Ribblehead Viaduct itself. Our final location in this tour is therefore a spot which allows you to have both Wernside and the Ribblehead Viaduct as the background to your photographs. To get to this point you need to go through the little wooden gate at the side of the quarry entrance and then turn immediately right and scramble up a small hill. From this point Ribblehead Station, Ribblehead Viaduct and Wernside are all laid out in front of you, including on the left hand side of the station at the end of the platform, the old station master's house, which can be rented out for holidays if you fancy something a bit different. From this location you're obviously quite a long way from the railway line itself, which is why all these photographs were taken with 300, 400 or 500mm lenses. Finally, if you're thinking of visiting the Ribblehead Station area, then I've always found the Friends of the Settle and Carlisle Railways webcams extremely useful. They can be accessed from this web page and allow you to keep an eye on things like the weather and the contents of the quarry sidings, no matter where you are in the world. I hope you've enjoyed this guide and found something useful in it. I'm hoping to produce more, so please subscribe, and as always, many thanks for watching.